Hey there, partners. Welcome to my story craft time. We're going to have some down home good western fun here making some crafts with glitter and glue and tissue paper and construction paper. We're going to have a good time. All in honor of our book this week, Nobody Hugs a Cactus. Because who would want to hug a cactus? I mean, how cute is that? And when he grows his little flower, he's really cute. But he is kind of prickly, so be careful if you touch. So I thought we could actually make a craft cactus that isn't quite so prickly to touch. And this is what we're going to make. Isn't that cute? And this one you can touch without getting poked, but he still looks kind of prickly. And he never fades his flowers. And then we're also going to make a cowboy sunset. Isn't that kind of cool? I would say that the cowboy sunset is a craft that is geared more towards older children, um, but the younger kids can make it too, as long as they have plenty of help with their caregivers. And this one is also older kids could do, but I think your younger children will have more fun with this one. So we're gonna show you how to do both of these crafts today. Um, and we're gonna start with the prickly cactus. So we're gonna go ahead and move our cowboy out of the way for now. Sorry, Caesar. Okay, so if you happen to come by the Herb Memorial Library, you're gonna be able to get a craft kit for the prickly cactus. That's gonna come with a set of directions that walks you through everything we're gonna discuss in this video. And it also comes with everything that you need to make this cactus. It comes with a little red um, rectangle, comes with a little yellow rectangle, it comes with tissue paper squares, it comes with a cactus template on two pages, it comes with a blue sky background. It even comes with sand. So you can go ahead and make this craft at home. Now, if you can't make it into the library, never fear, you can still do all this stuff at home. If you um, are able to go online to iheartcraftythings.com, you can get this uh, template as well and print this off on your own um, home printer. Or just draw ovals, you can do that too. And that's how you're gonna make your cactus. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is take your template and you need to cut out all of these ovals with your scissors. If you're gonna let your kiddos do this part of it, make sure they are child safety scissors and then let them go ahead and practice cutting their circles out or their ovals out. They're gonna to need to cut all three of the big ones and both of the little ones. So that when you're all done, you end up with this, where you have the two cactus arms and the three cactus ovals. And then you're going to need to fold your cactus ovals in half the long ways. And I'll demonstrate this for you here. You wanna bring it all the way to the edges. This is really good practice for those little ones with their um, eye-hand coordination and their, their uh, small finger um, coordination skills. And you wanna you want to fold all three of the large ovals right in half the long ways down the middle. And make sure you crease those edges good. Now we went ahead and we did this out of just plain colored paper. Um, if you're doing this at home and you wanna use construction paper, you can, but it'll be harder to fold and thicker to glue. So you're really better off just using regular old paper. Then the next step you need to do is take your um, red piece of paper and you wanna cut it into a set of rectangles. And then with these rectangles, you want to cut these into itty bitty little triangles. And all I did was just um, angle my scissors and cut in until I get all these nice little triangles out. Because these are gonna be the spines of your cactus. And you wanna do this for all of the red paper so that you have a whole bunch of red triangles. And then you wanna take your glue stick and you want to run a bead of glue along the edge of your first large cactus. And you want to glue some of these spines along the edges. You can put on as many or as few as you like. And you can skip this step altogether if you don't want to have spines on your cactus. Maybe you want to be able to hug your cactus all the time. And so you don't want him to have spines. Now glue stick glue does dry really fast. So you might have to help your kiddos um, re-stick some of these spines on from time to time. Okay, and then when you get some on there, then you wanna put the rest of your glue on here again one more time. Maybe you can go in over the tops of these spines carefully. And you want to press the next section 
right on top of that one. And then make sure that they line up good, nice and even on that seam, and press them together. So as you can see, you've got some spine sticking up there. Then we're gonna go ahead and do that again on this one. We're gonna put just a few along the edges here like so. A Little bit of glue here. And then we'll put some more spines on. You may not use all of your um, spines and that's fine. Like I said, you can put as many or as few on here as you wish. Okay, and then we're gonna do the exact same thing we just did. More glue. And we're going to glue this down like so. Lining him up. Oops, that wasn't very straight. And there we go. And line it on nice like that. So when you open it up, you can see that you've got spines stacking out the top. If you'd like, and I didn't do this on mine, but if you'd like, you can glue along this edge and put more spines. And again, flip it over and do the same on this side. And that way you'd have spines out of all of it. It's entirely up to you. So then the next step that you want to do is take your cactus arms. And you want to turn them upside down. And then you also want to glue some spines along the edges of these as well. And I did mine just towards the top area um, so that um, it can stick to the sides and the bottom of my cactus. And we're just going to put these around here. You don't have to put them on straight either. They can go on an angle. If you look at a cactus, you'll notice that the spines kind of stick out every which way. They grow all over a cactus so to provide the best defense against animals that might want to eat the cactus. And then that's what that looks like when you turn that over. And repeat with the other arm. And you want to do just the top part and put your spines on again. And then once you've got all your spines on, how you want them to be, um, if you didn't use a glue stick and you use school glue, make sure it dries thoroughly before you proceed. And there's that arm. Because now we're going to go ahead and we're going to glue our cactus arms to our big cactus. And what we can do here is just put a little bit of glue, flip them over so that you're on the other side. Put a little glue on the bottom and put them on the side like so. However you want your cactus arm to pop out. And then you're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. I'm gonna put my cactus arm a little bit lower on this side of the cactus. And we're gonna glue him on this backwards like so. so when we open it up voila it looks like that so we've got our cactus just about built so now it's time to do our desert sand and with the yellow piece of construction paper here we want you to go ahead and cut a wavy line out of the top so that it looks like this when you're all done that gives it kind of a contoured look for your desert and we're just going to go ahead and put some glue on here and we're going to glue it to the bottom of our paper. You'll notice I've got the paper going what we call portrait or vertical. And that gives us the max amount of room for our cactus. And now we're going to put lots of glue on the sides of our cactus and up the cactus arms. And we're going to go ahead and put him centered on our desert floor. And just push him down like that. And then we're gonna put more on this side, just like that. And when we open them up to push them down, that's gonna make your cactus pop out like a 3D cactus. Now you'll notice on my final drawing, we drew, spine, we drew um, lines on our cactus to give them some depth. I just used a black marker to do that, but if you've got different color green markers, you can certainly do that, that adds depth to your cactus. Your lines can be any kind of shape and size. You can break them up a little bit as you go. You can be as creative with them as you like. Um, we think the lines do give nice depth to your cactus. Um, kind of makes it look fuller and more round. And you want to do this on all 
um, of the sides. And we'll do one here. And one more time here. If you want to use like a light green and a dark green marker and alternate, you can do that. I've also seen it done with white lines. That was kind of cool. And you can even wave the lines a little bit to make it look like maybe the cactus was growing um, from a lot of moisture or something. And there we are like that. And now we can go ahead and make our cactus bloom. You're going to take the pieces of tissue paper that we gave you. And you want to kind of crumple them up a little bit. To a little ball and you want to put a little bit of glue on the bottom of them and decide where you want your flower to bloom and we'll put another one maybe down here on the bottom a lot of cactuses only produce one or two flowers we went ahead and put four on my sample one um, you can put as many flowers on your cactus as you want you can even put different color flowers on your cactus we did that too we did a um, combination of red and pink because this is a make-believe cactus you can do it how you like and we even put a little bit of yellow inside of our flowers um, just to make it pop so we can do that again just crinkle up the yellow and then stick it on the inside of the pink and then wad it up again and that makes a cute little um, flower coming out and we can do that on this side too just put it on the inside and then let it pop out like that. And we could put a little bit of pink on the inside of that red one if we wanted to, just to um, make that one pop out too. I'm sure that any botanists that are watching will say that's not right, but that's okay. Okay, and then last but not least for our cactus today, we need to put some sand down here. And we do recommend using either school glue or a glue stick. Um, we'll demonstrate with a glue stick here today, um, just because it's a little bit less messy. But if your kids like to finger paint, let them go ahead and pour some school glue on here, just a little bit, and then rub it in with their fingers. And then you're gonna take the sand, we provide it for you in little bags, so it won't make so much of a mess. And then you wanna sprinkle the sand on top of the glue and let it dry. And as you can see, the, the glue stick dries much faster than what we're going to need for the sand to dry here, which is part of the reason why we recommend it with school glue more than a glue stick. And when it is all covered, you need to let this sit and dry for a while. And what's going to make it end up looking like is this nice sandy texture that we have on the bottom of our sample. And that is how you make a prickly cactus. Isn't that kind of fun and easy to make? Now the, the other craft we want to make tonight is our cowboy craft. And he is a little bit more complicated and a little more time consuming. And so if you're going to do this craft, make sure you have a little bit of time to work with it. Um, again, if you come into the Herm Memorial Library, we're going to have everything that you need in your craft provided for you. Let me show you what this one looks like again. This is the final project. Um, you're going to need coffee filters to do this. You're going to need um, the cowboy stencil template that we've provided, um, which looks like this. You're going to need some black construction paper and some white construction paper. And you're going to need markers or food coloring and water so that we can go ahead and make that. And we're going to need glitter glue so that you can make this fun craft. So the first step we're going to do is to color the coffee filters. Now each kit that we send home comes with two coffee filters, just in case you mess up. And there's two ways to color these things. I recommend that you get some wax paper out and cover your protective surface with that because you're gonna need water on this and it makes a huge mess. So just get some wax paper. And then you're going to want to get either markers out and we recommend um, watercolor markers. And you're going to want to use colors that you would see in a sunset, like red and orange and yellow. And then you just want to take your coffee filter and you just want to color all over it. You want to completely cover the coffee filter until it is, um, so there's no more white showing or very little white showing. And it's okay if you color over the colors a little bit. That actually um, gives it a better chance of bleeding the colors together. And um, 
and just continue coloring until you have the entire coffee filter colored. And then you want to take a spray bottle and spritz it with water and let it dry and all these colors will bleed. The darker and the harder you color, the better it'll, it'll bleed. But I also recommend really doing this with food coloring. Food coloring makes a more vibrant coloring sunset and all you need are the red and yellow colors. And then I recommend you get little glasses of water. And then you just want to add a couple drops of food coloring to each. So for the red, we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six. And then for orange, we'll do one, two, three. And with yellow, we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll go back to the orange because red and yellow make orange. One, two, three. Okay, so now we have three colored cups of water and our coffee filter. And we're going to kind of smoosh them out a little bit. And then we found a little bulb syringe. You can also use um, uh, uh, any kind of thing that you can push up water with, suck it with, um, a turkey baster, or just use a paintbrush and dip it in and paint that way. But the idea is that we want to completely get this coffee filter covered in the colors. And we just kind of want to dribble it on over. And the nice thing is the coffee filter pops up so the water runs down like a mountain. And you want to um, go between the colors and you kind of want to just get it all over. Again, it's okay if the colors bleed onto each other. That's kind of the idea that we're going for here. And we'll do some yellow here. And we just really want to get it good and saturated. And this is why this craft takes a long time is because you have to let this dry now. And as you can see, it is very, very, very wet. So we're going to pause this a minute so that I can go move this off somewhere and let it dry. Okay, so we've got our coffee filters drying and while they're drying, we can go ahead and work on cutting out our templates. And this is where we're going to need some help from our caregivers and adults to help cut some of these things out. For our younger children, some of our older children might enjoy this challenge. And in the, in the kit that we sent um, home from the library, there is this cutout template, or go ahead and feel free to freehand draw any kind of Western template you want, or go online and print off Western themed shapes, and you can print those off as well on regular paper, and then you just wanna cut them out. And when you get them cut out, you get these fun little shapes like this um, that you can um, work on your templates with. So what we're going to do next then is we provide you with a half sheet of black construction paper. And with your white pencil or your white crayon, you want to go ahead and trace these shapes onto the black paper and then cut them out. And you don't have to do all three of them. If you want your sunset to just have a cowboy and a um, cactus in it, have just a cowboy and a cactus. Maybe you want to have just cacti in your sunset. You can do that. Maybe you'd like to have the cowboy talking to the cowboy on the horse, and you could do that too. You can do whatever you like here with your shapes. But once you get them traced and cut out, this is what you'll have left. And you'll have these cute little black silhouette shapes um, for your design. These will take a little bit of time and a little bit of precision and effort to do, um, but they're really worth it if you take your time on it. So then, you want to take your white piece of paper and your large black sheet of paper and you want to go get your now dry coffee filter and as you can see every coffee filter design is going to look a little bit different depending on where the colors bled when you poured them on the coffee filter or how many uh, markers you used and you want to take your dried filter and you kind of want to center it you want to center it on your black paper and then you want to drop it down just a little bit and with your white pencil you want to trace that part out. It's going to look a little bit like a um, half moon here when you've traced it and when it's all done it's going to leave you with a frame of a black circle when you've cut it out with this part left over. Now we're also going to need some desert floor for our silhouettes and that's where this piece comes handy back in. We just want you to push it back underneath here and figure out how much of a, of a desert floor you want 
And then go ahead and put some um, hash marks there and run your ruler across like so and trace across and then you can just cut that line right on out as well and now you have a desert floor for your silhouette characters to, to ride across on now we need to put all this together now that you have all the parts you have your white sheet and your black frame and you have to take your glue and again we recommend um, glue sticks and not school glue for this because the school glue will bubble up and leave um, spots in your paper and we want a nice smooth frame so you want to put lots of your glue stick on so it'll hold firm and you just want to put that on the back side and then flip it over and line it up with your white paper nice and easy and smooth and then press down Make sure that it's even. And you can smooth out your wrinkles. And then you've got a little bit of a pocket here all the way around. And you can take your sunset and decide how you want it to look. Maybe you want the, uh, the brilliant yellow sticking on the top. So then you're going to want to take your glue stick again and just put glue on the back of your coffee filter like this. And don't worry that some of it's going to stick over the edge. We'll trim that off here in just a moment. And you're going to go ahead and place that right inside your circle like so and adjust it so that it fits perfectly. And there you are. You can lift this up to tuck it underneath if you need to. So you see I do have a little bit of a lip here we're just going to go ahead and trim all of this bottom edging off just like this and we can trim some of the side off on here too we really just want to see the silhouette okay now we're going to take our floor our desert floor and we're going to glue that in place on the bottom and now we can add our characters so we can take our horse we'll put our horse on here and we'll turn him upside down glue him on try to make sure you get his um, legs and his tail really good so that he doesn't slide off and we can put him high on the hill here And we can put our cactus on. Maybe we'll put this over here in the corner like that. I don't know if we have room for our other cowboy friend on this one either. I don't think we have room. Nope, I don't think he'll fit. But if you want to put him on, you could. And then last but not least, we can decorate the round side of our silhouette with some glitter glue. The library did not provide glitter glue to go home. If you do not have glitter glue, um, you can make your own glitter glue. All you need to do is mix glitter and glue together, um, or just use regular school glue to make your design and then sprinkle a whole bunch of glitter on top of it while you've put it on newsprint or something, and then let it dry and shake the excess glitter off. And then you just kind of want to make a freestyle kind of even pressured um, design here and kind of come on up like it's a rope. And maybe you're oops. And sometimes it might splatter a little bit, that's okay. Just come back in. We can always come back and fix it with um, a uh, toothpick or a q tip or something if we need to. You can always come back along too. Sometimes there's air bubbles in your glitter glue bottles. And then we can come and make that kind of a free kind of rope outline frame. And there you have it. There is your cowboy silhouette. Um, when he's completely dry, if you see that you missed some glue spots, just come back along with your glue stick and touch them up a little bit to make sure everything sticks down like it should. And then let it come to a thorough dry before you start displaying it. And that's how you make a cowboy sunset. 
So I hope that you really enjoyed our crafts today, that you enjoyed our cowboy sunset and our prickly pear cactus. And we look forward to seeing you guys again next time. Thanks so much. Bye.